There is a fascinating aspect of sacred geometry known as Metatron's Cube. And this is what it looks like. I've been making mandalas based on this archetype for a really long time, over 20 years. Thinking about it, contemplating it, meditating on it, just listening to it all these years. So the first question is, who is this guy, Metatron? Who is this being known as Metatron? Where'd he come from? If you investigate, you find that Metatron was an archangel who was mentioned in Islamic, Judaic, and Christian mythologies, medieval mythologies. He was considered to be the scribe of God. So this would make the archangel Metatron the equivalent of the ancient Egyptian scribe of the gods known as Thoth, Hermes. Now, according to legend, a scribe of God would understand the root principles of creation, which are almost always associated with sacred geometry. In fact, the archangel Metatron is many times pictured with or holding a cube. So that's a little bit about Metatron, the guy Metatron. But the graphic known as Metatron's Cube didn't show up till later when a medieval Italian mathematician named Leonardo Pisano discovered it. So the next question is, why and how did Leonardo come to call this particular graphic Metatron's Cube? Well, the answer is simple. Number one, he probably had read, or not probably, he read the histories of Metatron. He was familiar with the legends. And number two, he was also familiar with sacred geometry, probably initiate in one of the schools, one or more of the schools, that held those secrets. So between those two things, it points to the connection that Metatron's cube has with sacred geometry. And it traces right back to nature's first pattern and the 13 very special circles that are found inside the fourth consecutive circle of nature's first pattern. That's where it comes from. And when you connect the centers of those 13 circles, you get Metatron's cube. Oh yeah. Leonardo Pisano discovered, and this is the really cool part, Leonardo Pisano discovered that you could create an illusion of all five of the platonic solids in this graphic that he had discovered. And he called it Metatron's Cube. Connecting the edges of four equilateral triangles creates the tetrahedron. Connecting the edges of six squares creates the hexahedron, or cube. Connecting the edges of eight equilateral triangles creates the octahedron. Connecting the edges of twelve pentagons creates the dodecahedron. And connecting the edges of twenty equilateral triangles creates the icosahedron. Wow. Look at that. That's a tetrahedron. That is a tetrahedron, four sides. This is the root crystalline archetype right here. Three-dimensional sacred geometry, very close to source, extremely close to source. Now when you systematically study this phenomena of Metatron's cube, you discover that the first three platonic solids, that's the tetrahedron, the hexahedron and the octahedron are perfectly blueprinted inside this two-dimensional pattern. But when you get to the next two, the dodecahedron and the icosahedron, you find that they are not perfectly blueprinted in Metatron's cube. The dodecahedron is almost perfectly blueprinted in Metatron's cube, but six additional short lines must be added in order to complete the form. The icosahedron is another story as the illusion is definitely not an accurate blueprint. This fact discourages many of the most investigative students of sacred geometry and causes some of them to negate the significance of Metatron's cube. This is very understandable, but I believe unfortunate. 
So one of my major goals for this piece is to re-establish the credibility of Metatron's Cube. And this is the whole key right here. Metatron's Cube is a transcendental form. It reduces, naturally reduces in size, smaller and smaller and smaller Metatron's Cubes and larger and larger and larger Metatron's Cubes all relating to one another empirically, expanding all the way to infinity and all the way into infinity. And with the additional centers that those transcendental aspects of Metatron's Cube create, it's very easy to get a perfect blueprint of both the dodecahedron and the icosahedron. This is really significant and this makes Metatron's Cube actually work as a perfect blueprint. Now this is the most interesting and esoteric point as far as I'm concerned. Metatron's Cube beautifully illustrates the mental nature of the universe through this unfolding of two-dimensional realities into three-dimensional realities. Very interesting, very important. To back that up, let me read this little paragraph and tell you a story about the invention of the piano. That's a good one. Bartholomeo Cristofori di Francesco of Padua, Italy, developed the first major piano from the harpsichord around 1720. Hmm. This major innovation was conceived when the inventor experienced a blinding flash of revelation, which he called the pianoforte. So I can imagine that Bartholomew woke up one night out of a dead sleep, wide awake, he says, Maria, Maria, I've got it, I've got it. We'll strike the strings with little hammers. We won't pluck them, no, we won't. We'll strike them with little soft mallets. This is big, Maria. So Maria thought he was mad, of course, and so did a lot of other people, but that didn't bother Bartholomew, oh no. He held this idea in his mind. He wouldn't let go of it. He thought about it, he started making drawings, he started making models, he started raising money, he spoke for it all over the place. He just held on to this idea and wouldn't let it go. and out of his mind precipitated this invention of his called the pianoforte. Is that amazing? That is the way it works. Beautiful illustration of the way the universe works. The piano could never have become a reality until it was first mentally conceived. Conceptual ideas on all levels always precede manifest realities. And this is the nature of the universe. The Hermetic axiom reads, the all is mind, the universe is mental. And Metatron's Cube is teaching us about this conceptual mental nature of the universe. And the current experiments in quantum physics are also teaching us this exact same thing. Nothing can be created without first being a conceptual construct of consciousness. Without a mental, conceptual equivalent in consciousness, nothing could exist. And sacred geometry is the creator's conceptual architecture out of which all things precipitate. Amat Goswami, the brilliant quantum physicist, teacher, and philosopher, says it extremely succinctly, quote, You can make sense of this world only if you base the world on consciousness. Consciousness is the ground of all being, and quantum physics makes this as clear as daylight." Unquote. I would say that Metatron's cube also makes this as clear as daylight. As clear as daylight. Consciousness is the ground of all being. 